Hey kids, today we are going to learn about American pop artist Jasper Johns. Here is his picture right here, and he's sitting in front of one of his paintings. So let's break down pop art. So in the 1960s, there were, and 1950s, there was a whole group of artists called pop artists. So pop art basically stands for popular imagery. So what does pop art stand for? Popular imagery, that's right. So they would take something popular from their culture or time period and turn it into art. And a lot of people um, at the time of pop art, they didn't like this because they said, you can't just take anything and make it into art. And the pop artist pretty much said, well, yes, you can. So let's look at what Jasper John's themed pop art was, okay? He's also categorized as an abstract expressionist artist. So these artists, um, and also Jackson Pollock is an abstract expressionist artist. They <clears throat> did this kind of spontaneous painting. They didn't really think about it too much. They said, oh, if this is something I like, I'm gonna turn it into art. So spontaneous is kind of like when you are doing something on a whim, or like right when you feel like it, they're kind of going with their emotion. Okay, so let's move on. Um, okay, so Jasper Johns was born in the 1930s and he is best known for his flag paintings. And here's an interesting fact. In 1980, 1998, at the Met, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, they paid more than $20 million for a painting called White Flag. Okay, so let's remember this theme that we see here. So he likes, American themed things like flags. He also likes letters, numbers, and we already said USA. Those are all common themes that he uses through his art. That's all common popular imagery things that he uses in his artwork. Here's the flag. Here's a hidden number eight, if you can see the eight. And then here is the alphabet, just painted and really beautiful and kind of messy brush strokes. That was his um, abstract expressionist theme coming out. He was very interested in art as a child, but then by the age of 24, he made the decision to become a real artist. Let's look at this picture. So I want you to think about what you see. Let's look at this one first. So you might be looking at it at first and thinking, okay, there's just a whole bunch of scribbly lines. But if you look closer, what do you see? If you said that you see numbers, you're right. So this was his draft, and then this was his painting. All of these numbers piled on top of each other. That is such an interesting thing that he did. All right, in this picture, you can find the United States of America. I don't know why the artist chose to hide them. Maybe I see some kind of a common theme going here. What do you guys think? We have some hidden numbers going on in this picture. And we have some hidden United States going on in this picture. So it looked like the artist wanted to try to hide something when he was doing his work. Let's look at a couple more examples. So let's look at this picture. Can you see a number? I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to look at it. If you see a number five, you're right. Here's the number five. And he chose to go with a very similar color palette. He used a black and white gray scale. And it also looks very hidden. Here's another one. Very abstract expressionistic style. If you see a number eight, you're right. And then this one was to trick you guys a little bit, but we looked at this one first, but these are all of the numbers together. So if you said a number one through 10, you're right because they're all in there. This one's a little bit easier. 
we can see the impression of a three. And it looks like he, what did he use here? Maybe some kind of tag or magazine clipping? So that would be a mixed media art piece, not just a painting. Here's a whole bunch of hidden numbers. And again, some more hidden letters. So we really can start to understand Jasper John's theme here. Here is a display of some artwork that students have done in the past. So for this project, we learned about Jasper Johns. He's an American pop artist, and he made his artwork with themes. He used flags, American themed things, targets, numbers, and letters. So my other project uses some numbers. So we are going to look at some student examples because we are going to make a hidden number just like Jasper Johns. All right, so let's see here. So I've got Dom Diana Hawkins. This was her project. So she chose the number five. She made some lines over top of her number and then she colored it. This one does not have a name, but this person did some vertical lines. Well, actually they're more diagonal lines. And then they did their border and their number the same colors. This one has some really cool, crazy patterns. But see how the, the um, border matches the number? Same with this six. The border matches the number. The background is different. The border matches the number. It was black and black, black and white. And the background is colorful. This one was really interesting. They chose to do similar color theme, but this border this is Jalen Johnson. I remember her from a long time ago. She was in Miss Jade Johnson's class, who one of my colleagues. Um, so she chose to do this light matching the border and this background darker. Still, we can see the number kind of hidden. I thought that was really good. And her friend Sinai Dillard, another shout out to Sinai. She did a Christmas colored theme, but still she kept dark, hard coloring, light coloring. Still helps this, the four still stands out. We have, oh, this one's a collage. So this inside part is collaged with gold tones. The outside part is collaged with blue tones. So you can even change up the medium if you wanted to and you didn't have any crayons, no excuses. Alrighty, what else? So let me let me lay out the steps for you here. I did these years ago. So first you're gonna pick a number. It could be any number that you want. It should be number one through nine. Step two, you are going to draw some lines. On, on top of your number. So they could be straight, curved, zigzag, curly, wavy. Okay, the kids' examples that I just showed you, they picked all different type of lines. This girl picked like a wavy zigzag line. We have zigzag. We have kind of wavy and zigzag at the same time. Straight lines straight lines, straight and wavy. Okay, so we're gonna make those lines over top of the letter. I'm sorry, I keep saying letter, the number. <laughs> Step three, 
step three, you're gonna pick two colors to color inside the number. These two colors should be different from your background, remember? They should be different. So we have steps one through three. And then step four is the color of the background, which should be different from this one. Different. Here's my example. This was my example. Here's another example. I chose to do a checkered themed. And another example here where I chose to do some circles. All right. So if you are doing this project at home, you are going to need to sketch out your own bubble letter. If you are, have a printer or in a classroom, you can print out the numbers and then pick out which one you like the best. Three, four, and five. I am going to pick five. I remember Marcel Duchamp, he did I saw the figure five in gold. That was a very iconic piece. So I'm gonna make mine the five. And I just like how the five has a lot of curves and twists to it. So it is the three and the four and the two. The one's just a little bit plain, but like who doesn't love being number one? <laughs> so you are going to pick a number. Um, if you do not have the printer and you have to do this by hand, you are going to have to be brave and sketch out a number. So, I'll give my guideline here, and I'm going to do a fence around my five without touching the pencil. We're giving it a little fence. I know that looked easy, but I've been doing this for a lot of years. Erase what do you see? Erase what you see on the inside. Now I could give it fractural lines going across. I could give it zigzag, wavy, any kind of line. But think about it and slow down when you're doing it. You could even use a ruler. Kind of wish I had my ruler handy, but I don't. So I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to do some, and here, you know what? I might just give this a board or two just to make it look nice, like it's already framed. <laughs> now, when the kids were doing this, they had a hard time remembering border matched number background was different. You have to look at this line that you drew. You have to, you have to train your eye to see through it. Jasper Johns made his numbers look hidden. So we kind of want to hide our number, but still make it stand out at the same time. Okay, so let's do for me, I am going to just do some, I'm going to, I was going to make these straight, but they might not be perfectly straight. So I'm adding kind of a slight wave to it. Actually, I should be going all the way here. Sorry about that, I meant to go all the way across. I know what you're thinking, why are you doing that? We're hiding the five, just like Jasper Johns did. We're making it not so obvious, but it will become obvious when we do the coloring. interesting to color. So let's think of some interesting colors. You want colors that help each other stand out. You could use complementary colors. You can use analogous colors. I need to first find where I put my color wheel. So just bear with me for a minute. Here we go. So in this case, I think um, analogous colors would look the best. So those are sets of three that are next to each other on the color wheel. 
So let's just start with yellow. Yellow, orange, red, those are analogous colors, but so are yellow, green, and blue. See how they're next to each other? Like they're like sets of three friends. Now let me ask you this, are yellow, green, and purple analogous colors? No, they're not, because they're not next to each other. Purple's over here, they're separated. So those colors might not look great together. Another idea, black. You could always add black with, this, with the color choice. They, that's always gonna look good. Just like this one, for example. And, where is it? This one. <clears throat> Also use black. So black matches with anything. All right, we have to be brave and start coloring. So I'm going to do um, pink and purple. They always look good together, so I'm just going to stick with that. Now I'm going to remember step three was doing the number first. This part is so hard because I have to color in the five. It's so easy though to accidentally mess up and color in this little part, but why would we not color that part in? Why would that we not color that part in? You're right, that's supposed to be the background. We have to avoid the background right now. This was super difficult for my students and sometimes we had to end up erasing some stuff. So look, let's say I accidentally colored that in. You can sometimes get away with erasing stuff if you really like go slow at it. This project was frustrating to some of my students, but again, if you don't put in the necessary time and detail and focus, your work is not going to turn out good. Now this is the purple stripe, so I gotta follow this purple. I gotta follow this purple. You gotta pay attention. Same thing here. Same thing, yep, I'm right here. Had to think about it because it was getting tricky with all those lines. But if fourth graders can do it, so can you. Any age could do this. And you know what, When if, the, if a younger student wanted to try this and just color it just to make it look nice, you should do that. It'll still look hidden. Jasper Johns made his stuff look super sloppy. You know, but he stuck with his theme. I'm coloring this a little bit quickly just for the sake of time. And I totally, totally just got, see what happens when you rush. I'm gonna get my hand at a good angle. Just the border, just the number. Just the border, just the number. My students were getting so confused with this, they started coloring this part and I said, no. Not the border, not the border. If you don't know, just ask. All right, next I have I'm gonna do, um, I don't know if I wanna do blue or red. I kind of wanna just stick to blue. Blue and purple, those kind of make a nice, interesting color choice, and they're next to each other on the color wheel. I'm gonna do blue just since I have it peeled so nice. What color blue is this? Which one do I wanna use? Oh, this one's nice. Yeah, I got three blues. Oh, I like this one, even though it totally has green paper on it. It's blue. So we got to color in this. So now the five should stand out. The five is coming to life. And I'm going to pick light colors for the background. I'm going to do orange and yellow. Like I said, we're making this project is called a hidden number, but... We still want it visually pleasing to the eye. We actually do want it to stand out so we can tell what it is. 
Look how cool that already looks. But I had to focus. I'm even getting away with kind of coloring a little over top of the purple. It's because these colors are analogous. They don't get messed up when you put them on top of each other. And I can't even really tell that I did it, so. Little coloring tricks, you gotta know. Okay, it's looking so good already. Now I'm gonna do my yellow and orange background. Now this little tiny crayon is starting to hurt my hand a little bit, but that's okay. I have a big hand. So sometimes it hurts me when I have to hold these little teeny crayons. but not least, the yellow. This is looking so cool. Sorry for my speedy coloring. I'm just trying to get this done. All right. Jasper John's inspired artwork. Very proud of my turnout. Now you could really get into this with so much more detail, but I'm really loving the turnout. All right, can't wait to see your artwork. Thanks for watching with me.